Right now on CBS News, Bay Area, a coastal community facing a landslide threat, how residents are now coping with the danger and extended power outages. We haven't seen this for a while. The fireplace in the living room is where we had our dinner last night. The storm now blamed for at least five deaths across the Bay Area and a police sergeant now fighting for his life. And take a look at this, where a possible tornado just touched down in Southern California. They picked us up and threw us against the fence as we were trying to get inside for a shelter. From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Evening Edition. We begin with the aftermath of that deadly storm that brought hurricane force winds to the Bay Area. Good evening. I'm Ryan Yamamoto. I'm Sarah Donchi. Communities around the Bay Area are dealing with downed trees and all of the problems that brings. This is the other huge problem right now, the ground bringing the threat of mudslides. Our Katie Nielsen is live in Woodside with 30 homes now under evacuation advisory and residents of two others. They have been ordered out. Katie. Yeah, Brian, so take a look. This is actually the slide. This is the area of concern. This house that you see up here on the hill, this is one of the two where the owners are under mandatory evacuation orders. Now, you can see how the mud just came down next to that house. It went down the driveway and then came down onto the street here on Patrol Road. Early this morning, public works crews have cleared up the street but the concern is that the slide might not be over yet. That's because of all of this water that is still coming down from the hills. Just watching what's going on. Hope it's okay. Bill Mole and his wife Patty have lived at the top of Patrol Road in Woodside for more than 30 years. He walked down to see what was happening with the slide. We haven't seen this for a while, but it doesn't surprise me living up here. With this amount of rain, it's, it's kind of inevitable. Crews used a bulldozer to scrape mud off the road and dump it into trucks to haul it away. But the concern is the ground is so wet, more mud might slide down the hill, blocking the street and cutting off access to the 30 homes on the other side. The grounds are saturated and uh, we're trying to make sure that we're on top of everything, working with PG&E and our partners with the towns of Woodside. The evacuation advisory will stay in place for the next couple of days until geologists are sure the mud is done moving. Some residents decided to leave anyway, especially since the area has been without power since yesterday afternoon. But Bill and his wife Patty are going to stay. They have hot water and a gas stove to make some food, but no heat. The fireplace in the living room is where we had our dinner last night. We may think of getting a generator for the things that like the refrigerator and freezer, maybe the heater. Now we've been out here all day. It has not been raining, but look at the amount of water that is still coming down the road. It almost looks like a river, and that is why there is still cause for concern with this mudslide situation. So again, this is an evacuation advisory for all of the homes at the top of the road just because they don't know what is going to happen with this slide as this water continues to come down the hill. And emergency crews say they just need people to be ready to go at a moment's notice in case anything changes. Sarah. All right, Katie, thank you so much for that update. Another mudslide has drivers in Redwood City moving very slowly. The slide forced the closure of Edgewood Road just east of 280. We saw crews with heavy equipment trying to shore up the hillside, but the dirt kept falling down. And because of all the damage, San Mateo County announced today that all county parks will be closed through at least tomorrow while staff assesses any potential risks. Well, the death toll from yesterday's storm now stands at five. That includes two people hit by falling trees in San Francisco. Three others in the city were hurt, including an on-duty police sergeant. We're told he was driving down Brotherhood Way when a tree toppled onto his car. He had to be extricated from the vehicle, was taken to the hospital with injuries described as life-threatening. So far, the department is not naming him, but they do say he is a 16-year veteran of the force. In Walnut Creek, the passenger in this car was killed when a tree came down along Stanley Dollar Drive. That happened last night. The victim has been identified as Thomas Huster. The driver was also hurt. And we're also learning more about the man killed when several trees came crashing down on his work truck in Portola Valley yesterday. The San Mateo County coroner has identified him as 29-year-old Jesus Cruz Diaz of San Jose. Rescue crews were trying to free him from underneath a large eucalyptus when the wind blew more trees down. He died at the scene. And a fifth fatality happened near Oakland's Lake Merritt where another tree came down, killing the victim. Here's a live look at the PG&E power outage map right now. 
Definitely some improvements. At last check, nearly 65,000 Bay Area homes and businesses were still in the dark. Of course, that is a lot. But around this time yesterday, that number was nearing 200,000. And while they waited for the lights to come back on, some shop owners over in Walnut Creek tried to do business in the dark as best they could. Others, like restaurants, started to lose patience as they were losing money. We have to pay the rent and PG&E bills, which is so high recently. Every month they charge us at least 1500 or maybe up. Well, they want their money. They don't care how we survive here. And taking a live look outside right now, what a difference a day makes because we're actually seeing mostly clear skies, much, much calmer winds. Yeah, and you know, that's good news after what happened yesterday. Obviously, we've been talking about the danger of all of that. What a spectacle, Darren. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I've never seen anything exactly like that mm -hmm. in San Francisco ever. And you shot some video yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show again coming up at 530 in this newscast because it was actually some of the most impressive of the day to help illustrate mm -hmm. why we had so much trouble from this storm. But for right now, we're done. Right, the sky looks pretty dramatic out there, but if you look at first alert Doppler, there's virtually nothing on here. Maybe a few light showers. The storm has now moved down into Southern California. You might get a stray shower, especially in the North Bay, but this is going to be an afterthought of light rain. So I want to look ahead. We'll clear out what we have through today and tonight. There is another chance for some very light rain tomorrow, only in the North Bay right there. This is a, an entirely separate system. This is more of like a garden variety weak cold front. So what you'll have from this tomorrow, take a look at the time frame, you're going to see a line of light showers. Sonoma County and Napa County will notice that. About this time tomorrow, many of you probably won't even notice it, but some of you will. You get about a tenth of an inch of rain and it will get a little breezy. Watch the screen here as we go into the afternoon. You'll see that line kind of march across the bay there, right there as it kind of picks up. It's like a 15 to 20 mile an hour breeze again. That's kind of a non-event. We're not talking about wind advisories. We're not talking about the risk of more downed trees from that, but it's a weak little system nonetheless. When we get back together again in the complete first alert forecast, we're going to talk about the next system, which is not getting here until next week. We've got a lot of time on this one and a lot of details still to get worked out and resolved, but we'll give you the best thinking on what that next storm by the middle of next week might look like. For now, Ryan, back to you. All right, thanks, Darren. In San Francisco, it wasn't just rain falling from the sky. So were shards of broken glass. That's after wind blew out windows on a number of high rises, including the Millennial Tower. And Mayor London Breed's office says more than 700 trees and limbs came down all across the city. And that number could rise as crews survey all of that damage. And one of those trees took down some power lines at Hayton Broderick. And that really confused a driverless Waymo car. It just kept trying to go down that part of Hate Street that was closed off, causing even more of a backup in that area. Hmm, shortcoming there. Okay, check this out. This is some new video of those untethered barges that crashed into the Third Street Bridge yesterday near Oracle Park. It also splintered part of the wooden walkway when it happened. That side is closed to pedestrians as carpenters are trying to fix it. The bridge is not raising for boats right now, of course. No word yet on how long repairs are going to take, but the city engineer said he's actually impressed at how well the 90-year-old bridge took the hit. That's something uh, to be uh, proud about because um, I guess they don't build them like they used to. Well, the bridge will be busy on Monday because the Giants are hosting the A's for an exhibition game. Fans will be able to walk across the undamaged side for now. And more maritime issues all across the bay. And this one in Alameda, where several boats broke loose from their moorings at the Encinal Yacht Club. Owners say they had to scramble today to try to recover them. And those five boats out on the end, the sailboats with the mast sticking up, mm -hmm. and the two small uh, motor boats, they tore off the end and went out towards Oakland. Then the wind changed and they went towards Jacqueline Square. So they went all the way down to Jacqueline Square. And that's where the Oakland Fire and Rescue Boat was out. They were actually rescuing some boats that had broken loose in Oakland or trying to. So they were able to connect up to the docks and pull them into the uh, Jacqueline and Square. Yeah, they were just floating away there. No estimate yet on the total damage. It is still slow going through the Altamont Pass for the third day in a row. The far right eastbound lane still closed for repairs after the super saturated soil started sliding out from under the roadway on Monday. Crews are also trying to fix a storm damage retaining wall, and that could take a while. Stay with us throughout the newscast for much more first alert weather coverage. You can also find updates at KPIX.com and streaming on the CBS News app.